Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV is proudly supported by Adventure Spec in England, Rally Raid Products, Giant Loop in the United States, and Adventure Moto in Australia. Come with us on a 4,000 km motorcycle adventure through the outback of Australia. First we tackle a crossing of the Simpson Desert, 500 km and 1,500 sand dunes up to 40 metres high with the fuel and water that we take. This challenge was tough on man and machine and not everyone will succeed. Then on to the magnificent Flinders Ranges where we taste some of the best adventure riding trails Australia has to offer. With four KTMs and two Suzukis on the ride, you can be assured brand rivalry will add spice and humour to this adventure. If this video doesn't get your heart yearning for adventure, you're either unconscious or dead. So sit back and relax while we try to get you motivated to take on your own adventure. We fly 4,000 kilometres from Sydney to Alice Springs, where we meet our bikes and head towards Mount Dare, just 70 kilometres from the Simpson Desert. This was meant to be an uneventful day of travelling, but by the end of it, one of the riders will have end for ended his bike, broken his back, and got us all thinking, were we going to make it? During planning for the ride, Philippe and I have picked up another four riders of varying skill levels, and you'll get to meet them later. Now the reason we're in a plane is that due to work commitments we only have two weeks to ride, and Alice Springs is over 4,000 kilometres from where we live in Sydney. Our bikes were trucked to Alice Springs whilst we took the four hour flight. The flight gave us a chance to soak in the desolate beauty of the outback at a safe distance, knowing full well the following day we would be in the thick of it. We arrived at Alice Springs to a large contingent of screaming fans. The next job, find the truck with the bikes. Nugget has lost $100,000 in motorbikes. <laughs> he doesn't even know what time it is in Alice Springs yet, so... <laughs> We're in trouble, I'd like you to meet Nugget, chased by the cops as a lad and a jack of all trades. He loves heat, drinks like a camel and is the best rider of the group. Nugget's dad, he's arrived, he's got our bikes. Nugget's dad Ted has driven the bikes 4,000 kilometres from Sydney to Alice Springs to help us out and we appreciated his help. Hey Ted! <laughs> You've made it, Ted. Well done. Thanks, mate. That's half the job done. Yeah, the, the quality bikes are off. Oh, the reliable ones are off anyway. Yeah, Which, uh, now the pretty ones are up front. We didn't want them getting dirty. Most adventurers cross the Simpson assisted by a four-wheel drive that takes fuel, water, camping gear and tools. An unassisted crossing significantly raises the bar as the burden of all this stuff has to be taken on your bike and in my case added about 70 kilograms to its weight. Final preparation Nugget. Just a little bit of final preparation, just put the tool kit in, the Leatherman, the brand new Leatherman. Can fix anything I reckon. And uh, I just put an oink on. Oink, oink's here. Oink's who the bike's named after and uh, yeah, all set. I left my clothes at home though, so I've had to do a I've had to do a Vinnie's run for four dollars to uh, get some clothes to wear on the trip because I forgot my clothes. To be cool, but... Mal, how's it going, Dave? How are you, mate? I'd like you to meet Mal, a very experienced four-wheel driver and dirt bike rider with a photographic memory and outstanding navigation skills. 
He's just started his adventure riding career. What are you up to? Oh, just final packing, um, you know, doing the... Uh, Do I really need that? Simpson <laughs> Desert food, um, as light as possible, basically. So, um, but I'll re repack probably a couple more times before uh, we go, I reckon. That's You're going to carry a seat across the Simpson Desert, you're thinking of. Oh, yeah. You are? I am. All right. I want to be so, Alex, how's it going? Good. Bike feels good. Much heavier, loaded up, but still handles really well. Yeah. I'd like you to meet Alex, who you would usually find out in the bush throwing around his BMW 1200 GS Adventure as if it were a dirt bike. Alex has joined the KTM clan and getting used to his new mount, a KTM 690 Enduro R. What the, what the hell's that for? That's a tent peg hammer. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's that murder in the night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so why do we need that? Is this the dong someone over the head, is it? Well, it was Wayne's idea, actually. Is, like... is it prophylactic or...? <laughs> It had worked that way, I reckon. <laughs> Dave, unfinished business. Unfinished business, London to Sydney. Got too hot when we hit Australia. Brought the six magnificent five and plus me back to try to do the Simpson. Pretty warm, um, and so I've just packed 20 litres of water. This is, this is it, if I can do this buckle up. <laughs> You're packed. I'm packed, that is to the brim. That is. Alex, we're in the middle of Australia and there's only one way home. Yeah, it's a bit serious. <laughs> uh, I should have thought it through a bit more, I think. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's a, going to be a great trip. Two kilometres into the ride, mate, and we're, uh, we're at Macca's. Yeah, anything for a latte for these boys. After the latte, we quickly got down to business heading south to Mount Dare, and it wasn't long before we had the first taste of the desert. We've just stopped at the 40k mark out of uh, Alice Springs at the famous 40k sand dune for the Fink Desert Race. A few of the boys have gone over to really see how hard it is, and the pros in the race make it look easy. Mal's worked up a bit of a sweat. I'm, uh, I'm losing a heap of weight out of this bike tonight. <laughs> so Mal, that's a taste of a dune. There's 1,500 of them in the Simpson. Well, I, I reckon uh, 20 PSI less than the tyres will be one good factor. Oh, it does. It makes and, a huge um, difference. A lot of stuff's coming off this bike tonight. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a learning experience for me. Tried to get up this dune, the first one we've come across, and didn't quite make it. As we continued to head south, I couldn't help but think that if Mal and Alex had trouble getting over that relatively small dune, how would they go when we reached the desert dunes, between 80 and 120 feet high? The ramifications of being stuck in that isolated area just didn't bear thinking about. As you'd expect on corrugated roads, in those first 80 k some bits and pieces shook loose on the bikes. No big deal but it was enough to open up that old chestnut, the Suzuki-KTM rivalry. What's happening, Nugget? Oh. The old girl seems to be bottoming out on the, uh, on the erosion mounds trying to keep up with these being the KTMs, so I'm just taking a bit off the, the number plate holder just so I can hit the whoops at warp speed. With bolt tightening complete, we turned our attention to the nearby 450s, practicing for one of Australia's premier desert racing events, the Fink. The racetrack followed by the side of the road, a nugget came across one of its famous races, Ryan Branford. More commonly known as Fink, and we're following the, uh, the Fink racetrack down, and we've just happened to tumble across the local legend, Ryan uh, Bad Boy Branford here. Well, we're just heading off a over to the Simpson, have you got any uh, sand riding tips for six old has-beens? Or never-beens, I should say. <laughs> I reckon the faster you go, the easier it is. I see past a couple of boys just then. They look like they were getting a bit bit shady in the uh, in the soft sand. It's been a pleasure. No worries, guys. Thanks very much. No worries. Enjoy the rest of your trip. Have fun. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. 
No worries. Well, that's about it uh, from Nuggets TV. So keep your throttles on and your filters clean. Over and out. <laughs> As we continued to head south, the landscape became more interesting and the sand on the road got deeper. What are you doing, one of me? Uh, I'm going to deflate those tyres a bit because they're way too hard for the soft sand. Yeah, look at this. Where is it? Uh... On big rides in isolated areas, it's advisable to regroup after every 20 kilometres or so to ensure everyone is okay. Unfortunately, as we focused on the big distance we had to travel, regroup distances steadily increased from 20 kilometres to a dangerous 50. Our worst fears were realised when we discovered that Alex was missing and Philippe and I backtracked nearly 50 kilometres before we found Alex recovering from a high-speed crash. The corner man system broke down and unfortunately Alex crashed and we haven't found him for about an hour and a half. We just got to him now. He's ended the bike, torn the front headlight off. Not looking too good. All right. How are you feeling? Uh, okay, I'm, I've taken Van, uh, Panadine Fort and a couple of Voltaren from my back. But I uh, came down on my backpack and arched across it. And uh, I've still got a bit of pain, residual pain, but I'm okay. Alex really wasn't okay. We would later find out that he had broken three lumbar vertebrae in his back and should have been hospitalised immediately. To continue riding in his condition was truly remarkable. You don't see this in the outback too much. But we do have 35 litres between the three of us and we've got 100 kilometres to go. But Alex has injured himself and we're just trying to lighten the bike up. It's a big piss you're doing there, Floyd. Oh, the bladder feels so good now. <laughs> Under a stunning afternoon sunset, yeah. okay, we continued go. to head south to Mount Dare. The final few kilometres would be ridden in the dark. With Alex's headlight damage, we had to share our headlight beams with him. Unbelievable. Mount Dare is the last place where we can get fuel, have a good feed and get Alex's bike repaired. We were now just 70 kilometres away from our staging point for the Simpson Desert, Dalhousie Springs. Carefully. Time to check radios, gear, fuel and water loads. But the biggest question on everyone's minds, would Alex be fit to ride? The good news is Alex looking reasonably fit, although or he might just not be whinging. Yeah, no, no, we're oh, right. no, I'd be whinging. <coughs> No, yeah, just, I mean, don't come on this side because it looks like a spaghetti bowl. I was here. gonna <laughs> well, <laughs> look, I gotta tell you, the rear end of the bike looks like spaghetti bolognese, <laughs> and there's Flea in his uh -oh. underpants. <laughs> <laughs> this is for all the mums, <laughs> all the mums watching. Hi, okay, mums, I say like, hi, mum. I take Visa card, MasterCard. <laughs> <laughs> He's called Mount Dare Services, any, <laughs> and he's flat out. <laughs> About mid-morning, we headed out from Mount Dare towards our staging point, Dalhousie Springs. We were keen to start the adventure, but we were oblivious to the serious nature of Alex's injuries. Alex had broken his back, and the only thing he should have been riding was a hospital bed. The painkillers he was taking had tricked him and us into thinking he was okay. He should have been in a hospital. Instead, we were heading away from help and about to take on the physically and mentally demanding Simpson. The dune flags on the four-wheel drives coming from the desert told us we were close to the start of our adventure. Just one more sleep and we would be in the heart of the Simpson. In this episode, we ride through kilometres of roads covered in rocks called Gibba and arrive at our staging point for the Simpson Desert, Dalhousie Springs. Alex rides on, not knowing he has a broken back, and Nuggets DR starts falling to bits. 
The next stop is the middle of the desert and fuel and water calculations at Dalhousie are crucial if we are to succeed. We're heading for Dalhousie Springs, the launch pad for our assault on the Simpson Desert. But it's not an easy trip. There are kilometres of roads covered in rocks called Gibber. And Philippe wasn't a fan of these conditions. When you ride and you hit that, well, if all good, you just get a uh, jerk offline. If all is bad, you got a puncture. One or the other. High quality road, Alex. Like a freeway, isn't it? Oh, it's a lovely road. Some of those boulders could uh, throw you. And we know what it's like to be thrown. We do know what it's like to be thrown. It's not a pleasant experience. You can never let your guard down riding in the desert. The rocks aren't your greatest threat, it's you and complacency. In these big open conditions, it's tempting to increase speed, but you never know what's around the corner. In this case, deep muddy tracks, now set like concrete, nearly took me out. It wasn't the first time the desert had raised my blood pressure, and it wouldn't be the last. We arrived in Dalhousie Springs in the afternoon with tons of time to do those last minute adjustments and check our gear. But Nugget's 25 year old Suzuki Dakar was looking worse for wear. I'm going to show you something they don't want me to show you. It's a big secret of the desert. All the KDMs are lined up, no tools out. Come and have a look at this. Hey boys, it's the DR boys, they're on the tools. Oh Nugget! Yeah. What's going on here? Holy! Oh, the muffler's fallen off. No, yeah. so, split it off. Right. Now Wayne. Yes, David. What are you up to? Ah, oh, changing sprockets to give yourself more power. Yes, yes. That way I'll be able to overtake you guys mm, instead of nice. having to sit behind you. So I'm going from a 15 mm. to a 14, which will be good okay. for the sand. Now I haven't introduced him before, but that guy in the fly net is Wayne. And I only have a crappy photo of him because he wears that bloody fly net all day. Every day. And Wayne is a Suzuki nut, just like Nugget. Nah. What'd you get, Nugget? What uh, do you got? Spaghetti sauce and the solo man. I'm going to build a new muffler. From spaghetti sauce and solo man. One of the two is going to work. There's nothing the guy can't do. Okay, Nugget. What's, what's the damage, mate? Well, if you have a look here, you can see that right in. If you come around this side, you can see straight. I, I can just about see the most powerful cylinder ever. So uh, put that over. Yeah, yeah. And then Cut her up in a couple of clips and uh, away we'll go. Alright. Campbell's. Campbell's spaghetti. We're going to be in strife. Oh, Oink, nice. what do you reckon? They got this sorted or what? Yeah, what's the update mate? Well, this hole here I've flattened out around and yeah. we're going to put the can over. Yeah. Oh, that's a good clamp. That's not going to work. I'm going to come around that's this way good. and grab that and that. Did. I think the DR is coming first and second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're cheap. They're proven, they're low percentage breakdown, yeah. and you and you don't need any fancy riding schools to ride them. Yeah, I reckon that's absolutely correct, Nugget and Wayne. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> the shoe fits. Yeah, and, if you, and you don't. And if you want to improve them, you don't have to spend a lot of money. No, no. And these bikes are poor as shit out, these mice, these two. That's right. We can't afford anything. We're not like these flash Austrian me, things. But me too. Right now, I think it's Philippe, the uh, French flasher again. You've come down about 50 I don't know if it's French attire or what, but if that's what right, so the French wear, I don't want to ever go there. He's in his underpants again. Uh, and his headdress. In his headdress. Yeah. Drinking a cup of, what's that, decaffeinated coffee? Yeah, it's a latte. The banter and jokes masked our trepidation of heading into a very tough environment. We knew we were going to be tested. Dalhousie Springs was our staging point and there was only one way forward, head east for 480 kilometres over 1500 dunes. From 60 kilometres above Earth, the parallel dune system of the Simpson Desert looks like wood grain. 
Shaped by millions of years of westerly wind, the dunes range in height from 1 to 40 metres. We were heading to Birdsville, and once we left camp, there was no turning back. Fuel and water supplies were crucial. All right, can we have a fuel talk? Mal, yep. just a quick fuel talk. So what are we sitting at, Philippe? What do you reckon for kilometres? Um, uh, we have 27 on the bike. We take another uh, 10, 12 litres. So that would put us uh, at around 40 litres, and that's more than enough. 40 litres to do 480 k's. Yeah, because it's only 480 to Birdsville. Nugget, what are you doing? I was putting in my spare, my super outboard motor oil. Well my done. Expensive tin. It's going in the uh, down in here with the snakes and the uh, around the snakes and. So what what food are you taking? Tell me the food rations you're taking. Huh. Right, spaghetti, and bread. snakes, no, no, no. This is, and a loaf of bread. Spaghetti. And a loaf of bread. This is not spaghetti. This is uh, exhaust repairing kit. Exhaust repairing idea. kit. That's from a desert run. Right. Um, snake sandwiches. So Alex, you're going light. So yeah, I'm going, going very light. I'm going to cut back on the fuel and water. Yep. Uh, How much water are you taking? I'm going to take uh, 10 litres all up, probably 11 litres. Yeah. Right. Wayne, how are you going? El Exxon Valdez. Look at the size of the tank on this thing. Yeah, well, it's got 33 litres in it. Yeah. And I've got a 7 litre spare. Yep. And I've been told I'll make it on food. So tell me your fuel situation. Two 12 litre bl oh, bladders. Yep. And, and your fuel tank. full now, at Dalhousie. Yep. That's 480 k's on a on a loaded 640. 40. So it should be more yep. than enough. And you've taken a. I noticed after the sand the last couple of days, you've taken a bit of kilos out off your bike. Um, this morning I've put everything in the truck basically. Um, I've taken out all my clothes. I'm pretty much. I've uh, got a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and some, one pair of shoes. Um, yeah. Taken out tools, yeah. taken out spare Go. tubes. Um, what else have I done? Just whatever I could get rid of, I've just got rid of. It was just way too heavy. In the next episode, we finally head into the desert and life becomes difficult very quickly. We lose a bike rider, break some more bones, and some of the bikes start falling to bits. We are reminded that Mother Nature has no tolerance for those not playing their best game. Everything you thought I ought to know Gonna make it deep Gonna be a mole And maybe then I'll get to thinking on my own Is there any truth that Nugget has come off today? Yes! In this episode, we have our first day in the Simpson Desert and take on some of the smaller dunes. It should have been relatively easy, but frankly, it didn't go too well. We lost a rider, a bike, picked up a couple of extra broken bones and other injuries, lost valuable fuel, a tent and rider's clothes. But hey, that's the nature of motorcycle adventure. Well, we're finally there, mate. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? So we all had a pretty good sleep. We've had a swim in the springs, which I'd recommend to anyone. We're just going to wait for the sunrise, which will be spectacular. Then we're going to go early before the four-wheel drives. The mozzies are getting now? Yeah, but once the sun comes up, they go away, and then you get the flies. But Dalhousie, we're leaving and hitting it. And uh, yeah, hopefully a couple of days' time, birds will. Look, we've got it all together here. Got my seat just in case. Yeah. Sleeping bag. I'm a bit worried with how much fuel I'm carrying on this back rack. But I'm just going to take it easy. So what, well, you just slowing down 120? Yeah, I've cut off the number plate because I keep bottoming out. But, uh, it's held together with a spaghetti tin, but yeah, I think we're all right. Heading out into the desert early in the morning has a number of advantages. During the cool night, the sand settles, and in the morning it's not as slippery and much easier to ride. Getting out before the four-wheel drives ensures we have the best riding conditions for the day. And then, of course, there's the heat. Well, it's just before sunrise and we're heading into the Simpson Desert to keep ourselves cool. The forecast temperature today is 30 degrees. And wrestling bikes in those sort of conditions in deep sand can really be taxing. So it's really good to get as much distance under our belts before the summer sun hits.
We are heading to Perni Bor for morning tea, and this will be the easiest riding conditions we'll have for the day. After Perni Bor, the dunes get bigger and the sand gets deeper and more challenging. How's our bikes flip? Don't they handle the sand well? It's fantastic. I'm in dreamland here. Yeah. The, the weight distribution is just perfect. Perfect, isn't it? Uh, the, the corrugation, we barely feel and we just cruise along. It's, it's really fantastic. Sorry, man. This is, this is a, a desert uh, machine. <laughs> it's in the... I think we did really well. Yeah. That's what I reckon. Second best bike here. Sorry. What? Oh, sorry. Oh, look, there's the desert princess. And then the gremlins started to emerge when Wayne discovered he'd lost valuable fuel. So you lost your fuel can, Wayne. Did you lose much fuel? Yeah, I lost about half. So half? Yeah. Jeez. So then I had to um, stop yep. and refuel. Yep. So now um, what either are you looking for? I'll make it or I'll use everyone else's fuel. That's all right. I've still got 11. So thank God everyone's got extra fuel. Whilst these riding conditions were easy, spare a thought for Alex, who was dosed to the max on painkillers and had a broken back. I have no idea how he was continuing on. Right, so we're uh, here at Perny Ball. 30 k's to go before the rig road turn off. Basically, yeah, 30 k's to go, then another 40, 50, 35, 40. If we can make Purple Corner today, um, I think we'd all be uh, rather happy with that. And then... Hey, oink. Yes. Is there any truth that Nugget has come off today? Yes. Nugget, have you come off today? Poor Roink, he was under the sand. He couldn't draw. <laughs> yeah, a little soft patch. Just there, uh, lost the front end and ended up uh, biting the dirt. The sand, I should say. But, yeah. but it's not only a DR sort of problem. Mal? I went down there on sympathy. You went down <laughs> on sympathy? Yeah, I saw him down there and... I caught the same, well not the same rut, but another route and lost the front end and down I went as well. Yeah, I can see Mal would later there. discover he had broken two road ribs. Road, so. Hit a bit hard, but okay. How are you going, Alex? Um, going alright. Uh, yeah, no, going fine. Bike's handling well. Now that I've dropped an awful lot of weight, I'm feeling good. <laughs> For most average riders, heading straight in soft sand isn't too much of a problem. But negotiating an off-camber soft sand turn, whipped up by four-wheel drives on heavily loaded bikes, is another thing. Welcome to the Simpson! These types of riding conditions in the heat of the desert quickly drain your energy. The name of the game is to ride as many of these turns as you can clean without any struggle. But for Alex, disabled by severe pain from a broken back, these riding conditions quickly took him to his limits. Meanwhile, Philippe and I were eating up the miles on our Kados. There is nothing more pleasurable than sitting behind one of your mates clipping along on a great adventure trail. Our bikes were balanced and handled the conditions perfectly. The extra effort we had spent setting up and tuning the suspension for the weight of our gear had all been worth it, and it made riding these conditions all the more pleasurable. The riding was brilliant. Each dune was different, but there was a rhythm between the sand and the hard pack between the dunes. It just put a smile on your face. Adventure riding in the middle of nowhere, eating up the miles, taking on the challenges and moving on to the next one. This was ADV heaven. He was a six foot four and full of muscle. So, Nugget, we're in the middle of the desert here. What's happening to Suzuki again? Uh, 
the same mistake. The spaghetti tin, the Campbell spaghetti tin, is made of too thin of metal. It's come yeah. loose, but I've, I've I've rigged it back up. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got some other problems? Yeah, my rack. I've lost a bolt here, which I think's caused my rack to snap on the other side. I'll have a look at that. Just hang on. Yeah. So, oh. put that on. Yep. One snap. Okay. As we headed further into the desert, the gremlins started to add up. Wayne with his lost fuel, Mal with two broken ribs, Nugget with a broken rack and continuing exhaust problems, and Alex with his serious injury. What we didn't know was for the past 200 sand dunes, Alex had been constantly slipping his clutch at full power in an attempt to smooth out the ride and ease his pain. Life was about to get real difficult. Alex, what's happened? Well, it would seem I've probably been riding the clutch a bit too much. And now I have no clutch, so we're letting the bike cool down. And I hope that uh, the clutch might come back to life. My prognosis is the clutch is knackered, but, and if it is, hey, we've only got 800 sand dunes to go. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> Wayne's ready to push, look. Hey, Wayne, put up your hand, you're ready to push. See that? Oh, it's a little hand, it wasn't. The DR's got a um, tow rope. It would be no inconvenience for the DR to tow the KTM to Birdsville. <laughs> Oh, ouch. Ouch. Yeah, I don't think I can live with the indignity. <laughs> I think I'll just die. Here. I think I'd have to put you down, Alex. Yeah. There is no way that a DR is towing us into there. Yeah, I think I'd put myself down, actually. <laughs> anyway, let's see what happens. After all, it is an adventure. <laughs> it certainly is. Thinking is of you, Darren. <laughs> As doubling Alex or towing Alex's bike was impossible, there were now two priorities. The first was to call for assistance on our satellite phone and provide our location and set a recovery plan in place for Alex and the bike. There's not too many taxi services in the desert and options for Alex were looking bleak. One thing was for sure, we weren't going to leave him there alone. Five bites, uh, five. Just, just hold on a second. Hello, you there? Okay, the coordinates are south, 26 degrees, 07.75. And we're on the French line, approximately 155 kilometres from Dalhousie Springs. As we were contemplating Alex's fate, a little luck finally went our way when a convoy of four-wheel drivers stopped to help us and generously agreed to take Alex to Birdsville. Alex's journey would now be a lot slower, but he would live in luxury and be fed like a king. Now knowing Alex's injuries, I'm pretty confident he would not have made it, as the conditions were only going to get worse. Keep up the fight, I'll see you soon. Right, okay. You've probably got three days in the desert now. Righto. Okay. You won't get as close to look at it. You've got Thank you it? very much. Thanks for your help and generosity. Thank Can't you. Leave him out here, right? Nah, that's what I thought. For a first timer in the desert, Wayne was setting a decent pace and seemed to have the sand riding figured out. But with all the delays, we were getting well behind schedule and we decided to up the pace and push on. With water reserves planned for two days, no one was keen to spend a third day in the desert. Half the secret of riding the desert safely is to understand fatigue and know when to rest and recover before mistakes take over. In hindsight, we should have been looking for a campsite to rest for the night. Pushing on merely led to more crashes that damaged riders and bikes. Oh boy, boy, it's not one thing, it's another. That's pissing out. We've got to get that out of there. Here's a hose. Here, just take that. Yeah, just pull this off the end here. You got a pair of pliers? Just get this off the end. Come on, mate. We've got to get this done. Yeah. 
It looks like uh, the series of mishap is going on. Uh, now I got a, a ruptured petrol tank, so we are trying to recover as much as we can. Fortunately, we, it must have happened, you know, uh, just a few hundred meters away. So yeah. we got most of it out. And uh, I'm in putting it, uh, what's, what was in my back tank, I'm putting it with the, the, front, with the front tank. So it, it should be all right. So you're going to save most of it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lucky the DR was carrying a spare fuel tank. <laughs> Nugget, it's not stopping, mate. It's not stopping, yeah. And Mal, how how are you going? Is I'm struggling. I'll be per perfectly honest, mate. I am struggling. Yeah, you've hurt your ribs in a four today, and um, ribs. And if I stand, it hurts. If I sit, it hurts. And I'm I'm just having trouble over the top of the dunes. Very soft of an afternoon, aren't they? So, um, the sneaky old DR just keeps on keeping on, though. I love you, brother. Mate, this has been relentless today. Lots of mishaps. So you went over the handlebars while Philippe was having his petrol crisis. Yeah, because it was a big clump of bush. I thought it'd be sand, but it was concrete, like solid rock. Funny I hit bit. Head first, so you all right? Yeah, yeah. Sort of starts, this... but I'm all right. Okay. Philippe, just bend over. This won't hurt. <laughs> Philippe was the next one to take a fall, and I would give him some first aid at our campsite for the night. He'd finished the day rather badly. He had cut his nose, lost his tent, and his clothes had fallen onto the exhaust and had been destroyed. We had made up time and were now in striking distance of Birdsville the following day. But at what cost? The great thing about working on Philippe, he's got a large nose. There's tons to work with. In this episode, the drama continues. The rear end of Nugget's bike falls off, and he tells me it looks like Steve McQueen's bike from the movie The Great Escape. And after a punishing day of heat and over 500 dune climbs, we reach the mother of them all, Big Red. If we get over this one, we've succeeded in our challenge to ride unassisted across the Simpson Desert. But the desert wasn't going to give that prize up easily. That's what I like about these DRs. It's got these snap-on, snap-off parts. Oh yeah, just love it. Mate, they're good protein. I put my coffee down for two minutes and look what happens out here in the desert. After some running repairs and digesting some flies, we tentatively headed out. Our goal was to get to Birdsville by the end of the day. Yesterday had been jam-packed with dramas and incidents that had held us back and we now had to make up time. But the challenges today were greater. The dunes would significantly increase in size, with many over 25 metres in height. In between us and Birdsville was 200 kilometres of sand, and if we wanted to reach our goal, we needed a drama-free day with no delays. So Nugget, let's get this right. Um, we're, we're 10 minutes into day two. And that, um, that Suzuki's let us down, has it? What's going on? No, no, just a, just a carrier rack. It's, um, it's, it's, it's had enough. Just show me the carrier rack. What's going on? It's bottoming out because it's um, oh, yeah, yeah. there. So what I've got to do is try and hold that up. Yeah. The boys were pretty and optimistic, thinking they could repair major right. structural failure with some clothesline rope. After the repairs, yeah, Nugget headed it. off so slowly that if we kept that speed up, it would have taken us three weeks to get to Birdsville. Something had to give, and it did pretty quickly. So Nugget, it's a full floater, and the uh, back of the bike's just floated yeah, away. Mate. She's like a 60s rally bike. <laughs> All the old Steve McQueen in the Great Escape. Yep. Now, I've spent a lot of time talking about this unassisted ride. The question I'd like you to answer, does Mal's help, who is carrying the rear end of Nugget's bike all the way to Birdsville, disqualify Nugget from claiming an unassisted ride status for the trip? I'll leave it with you guys to be the judge. As predicted, it didn't take too long for the dunes to become more challenging. The conditions tested Mal with his two broken ribs, and Wayne, who hadn't ridden in anything like this before. The journey and the dunes are getting bigger and bigger. This one's probably about 70 feet high. 
You can't even roll the bikes backwards. <laughs> He's through. Pissed it in. After hundreds of dunes, Nugget and I rode out onto the first salt pan. The salt pans are a defining feature of the desert and are seen as long white patches from space. For us, they meant that Birdsville was in reach and we would soon face our biggest challenge the 40 metre high dune Big Red. But right now we were just soaking up the vast desolate beauty of this great brown land. Yeah well we're about 80 k's out of Birdsville, we've probably come about 500 from uh, from Mount Dare and uh, I've lost my back fender but other than that the bikes are uh, turned into a motocross bike now so everything's going really well. We're about to go across Air Creek, I'm not sure there's any water in it but I'm all pumped to go back again. That's, you can see the others. That's good fun. Oh, look at them. <laughs> yeah, we, we, We're at the bottom of Air Creek, Wayne. Yeah, Dave, a bit different from the last time you were here, isn't it? Yeah. We would have been about uh, four foot underwater. Red's in the distance. Come on, Mal, hammer it. Go, 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 rev it, 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 rev it. You made it. During this hot day, we had climbed more than 500 dunes, and now there was only one more to go before we reached Big Red. Successfully climbing Big Red would mean we had crossed the Simpson Desert unassisted. But the desert wasn't going to give that prize up easily. Come on Nugget, now it's one. From the clay pan floor, Big Red is an intimidating goliath. The scars of four wheel drives that have torn up the sand before you can easily put you offline. Nugget was the first to take it on, and he was rewarded by giving it his all. He's there. It was now my turn to give it a shot. My approach speed was about 80 kilometers per hour, and as I rapidly came to the dune face, I had no idea of what line I was going to take. The ruts from the four-wheel drives were deeper than on previous dunes, and went all over the place. Fortunately, it all worked out. Red, made it. Yeah. Nugget had a second chop at Big Red before we had our celebratory photographs. You'll notice Mal is missing from the shots. By this time, he was halfway to the Birdsville pub. Yeah. Look at it. In the next episode, we head to Australia's version of Adventureland, the mighty Flinders Ranges. With a successful Simpson crossing under our belts, we headed south from Birdsville along the Birdsville track. The landscape for the next day and a half would be flat and the riding fast. Nugget would find the only waterhole for a thousand kilometres and hit it at 10 pence, nearly wiping himself out in the process. Our next stop was Mungarani. So Wayne, we've moved into South Australia, Mungarani. Are we in South Oz? Yep. What do you think of the ride this afternoon? 
good. That was a good road actually, really good. A little bit gnarly in one spot where there's all those pebbles, but other than that, it was really good. Yeah, mate, so we started in Alice Springs, yep. went all the way down here to Fink on the old garn, yep. down um, to Mount Air Station, yep. across the Simpson Desert via the French line into Pop Corner over to Burnsville, yep. where we stayed last night, and we're now down here at the Roadhouse, and tomorrow we'll be heading into the Flinders. So, sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. The following morning we continued to head south on the blacktop and by late afternoon we reached Beltana Station in the northern Flinders Ranges. After two days of flat brown land it was great to see the hills again. Beltana Station is huge at around 1900 square kilometres or just under half a million acres. This place is so big they use gyrocopters to find and then herd the sheep. I just didn't expect the pilot to try and hurt me. Fucking hell! Yeah, as the KDM boys keep reminding me, the back end of my bike's fallen off, and the muffler snapped in half, and the uh, the old Campbell spaghetti tin. It's done over a thousand kilometres now, and it's still hanging in there. So, uh, yeah. Value for money, that spaghetti tin, that's for sure. So your bog roll, how's that working? It's, it's good, good dispenser? Yeah, mate, it uh, flaps in the wind a bit, but uh, yeah, it's going well. It's been used a couple of times. No good. No good. What's this? Yeah, yeah well, mate. I did, did 1,500 kilometres across the desert, and we get to Lee Creek, and... Uh, the bike falls over outside the pub. Oh, so you crashed in Lee Creek car park, is that what you're saying? <laughs> the bike fell over. And uh, yeah, I snapped the lever. Nugget's found a friend. Nugget the goat herder. Nugget's getting a bit toey. Don't turn that goat around, Nugget. Hey. <laughs> That's limited to New Zealand. Hey mate, hey, come on. Save him getting run over? Yeah, we are just got to get him off the road. Got his tongue out. He thinks we're aliens with big heads. Yeah, maybe the KDM riders. Not, not the DR riders, you don't reckon? Ah, yeah, beautiful animal. We'll get him off the road before he gets run over. He sounded like Steve Irwin a bit, God bless his heart. Oh, he gives him a kiss. And another one. Don't molest the wildlife, son. We had a brilliant day chilling out around Beltana Station. The Flinders Ranges are just adventure riders heaven. But I'd have to say, the nightlife was when the entertainment really began. We just had to stay a couple more days. Yay! Hey, I'll pull the dick out for you. And I managed to get up next to him and he's legging it and I got, up and got him by the neck. <laughs> now I fucking... <coughs> 
break the old bike out and I got him by the neck and we were stretching and I held him. I reckon his feet was only much about every 30 yards. I got him up to about 140 and he was still pacing it but I let him go. Like, yeah. What happened? Did he crash? Oh, it was there. No, he kept up for about three strides. <laughs> Dave, you should be taping this. He went fucking end for end after that. Hey, that's the way, mate. If that fat bastard gets up there, he'll break the bloody... <laughs> break the four wheel. Do not get up there, dog. You'll wreck the... Won't you take me there? It's a place I want to be. Riding KTM 690's 22,000 kilometres from London to Sydney with Darren had been a great adventure. But there was unfinished business. I had planned for Darren and I to cross the Simpson Desert unassisted. Unfortunately, we had been delayed during our journey, and by the time we reached Australia, it was far too hot and dangerous to take on that crossing. For me, the trip was not complete without taking my 690 across the Simpson. It was unfinished business, and it had to be done. The Simpson is in the heart of Australia and a tough place. Just getting there is an adventure. I last crossed it in June 2010, assisted by a four-wheel drive, and believe me, that's the easy way. With 500 k's of soft red sand and 1500 sand dunes up to 40 metres high, it's a challenge. Riding deep soft sand at the best of times is hard enough, but riding it unassisted burdened with the weight of extra fuel, water and gear, takes this adventure to another level of physical endurance. But now Darren was back in England and I needed a new riding companion. And that's where Philippe comes into the picture. Philippe and I have been riding dirt bikes together for years and when I spoke of my unfinished business he jumped in boots and all. We decided to have our first planning day deep in the forest. A relaxing special place where we could clear our heads and take those first steps to making this dream a reality. Hey. This Simpson, you know, this is a uh, this is the bit we didn't do. Yeah. So I got this itch. Yeah. Um, I want to be able when I'll be 85 to say to my grandchildren, well. I did it. Unassisted. <laughs> <laughs> Unassisted. Yeah, I think that's um, that's the go. That's the credibility. Yeah. So many people cross it with, four, you know, with the trip of four-wheel drives behind. Them. Yeah. No, it, it doesn't sound right. It's, it's not the sort of thing you want to do. So, with Philippe now committed to riding with me, the next step was to focus on the bikes. For me, it was a no-brainer. It had to be my KTM 690. I simply had to take that bike I rode from London to Sydney across the desert. And Philippe also settled on a KTM 690. The next step was to prepare the bikes for 500 kilometres of sand dunes. And we settled on a Rally Raid Products Evo 2 kit with fairing. <laughs> I took my bike over to Philippe's where we set them up over a couple of nights. The Rally Raid parts fitted on the bikes perfectly and the instructions were simple and to the point. After a couple of nights work we've ended up with highly capable adventure bikes that can take you anywhere. The 690s have maintained their dirt orientation but are still happy to romp along the freeway. We now have a 500 km oh, nice. plus fuel range, a simple but effective cockpit, excellent ground clearance, and that rally raid headlight setup that can burn the fur off a kangaroo at 100 metres. But most importantly, rider comfort is excellent, and the wind tunnel tested fairing helps keep the wind flow smooth around my helmet. But far and away the best modification was the comfy seat saddle. My rear end has been in bliss ever since. 
So whilst we celebrated getting our bikes set up for the ride, there was a stack more planning to do. And I had a feeling a couple of our mates would join us on this Simpson Desert adventure. 